Howdy and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to, we're back, we're still working on old Black Betty here. Blam a blam. So Black Betty had some steering issues. So after I got the steering issues fixed, now it's time to go through and do some alignment on old Black Betty. So the first thing we're going to talk about is camber. Now I've got the fender off of this because I had to replace the blower motor. Ignore that. So camber is looking from the front. Is your tire leaning in or your tire leaning out? Okay, this is negative camber with the tire leaning in. Positive camber is the tire leaning out. Now, the factory spec on this is, is the factory preferred spec is zero degrees camber. Now, we do a lot of dirt road driving around here, and our even our paved roads are pretty heavily crowned. So, on something that you're driving on really crowned dirt roads or really crowned paved roads, you're a little bit better off to run some negative camber on the ditch side. If you run a little bit of camber on the ditch side, negative camber, and zero camber on the road side, your tires are well wear better, better and it'll handle better on really good crown roads. Now, if you drive almost entirely four lane interstate, those roads aren't crowned like our roads are crowned here. It's not like driving a dirt road for sure. So, we'll look down here at the gauge. Now, I've done a video already on this little adapter that screws on to the four-wheel drive spindle. This is a all the racing, Summit Racing, uh, Speedway Motors, everybody has these caster camber gauges for sale. They are really inexpensive. Uh, and the turntables, too. We'll get into the turntables here in a minute. But the way this works is you... you clamp it on or you it's magnets the magnets stick to something that is perpendicular to the plane of rotation did i say that right I think so so anyway you clamp it on there something that's square to the rim you've got a level here you level it out and then you read directly your camber so this is about negative one and a half degrees of camber that's close enough for this rig So, on this is out of the GM alignment book or GM book. So their camber spec is negative one to positive one. Factory preferred or service preferred is zero. Negative one and a half is close enough. The first time I hit a pothole, something's going to change. This is good enough. If that had been four or five degrees, yeah, we'd have changed something. But I was actually aiming for negative one. Negative one and a half is good enough. Now, the next thing that we need to measure is camber. We measured our caster, or I'm, I'm sorry, we measured our camber. Our camber is negative one. The next thing we need to measure is our caster. Now, caster, if you would think back to the old rigs that actually had a kingpin in here, your kingpin straight up and down that would have been zero camber. If you tilt that kingpin back as you turn the tire on a tilted back kingpin, it wants to kick the tire and put from the camber, it will put more caster into the tire. It'll, it'll lean the tire in as you turn to give the tire more bite because the bottom of your tire is going to roll because of the, just the way that it is and it's going to get pushed out so as you're turning you want your tire to tip into the direction of the turn to bite better yeah i think that's a wise explanation kind of like the rudder on an aircraft or the rudder on a ship it has to turn and bite so the way this works is you turn the tire out on your turntables, you turn out 20 degrees 
you level this out. Be in the shot. So you level the level out, and then you zero your caster gauge. And then you turn it in 20 degrees. You lever her back out. <laughs> yep, that's level. And then you read what's there. So we've got, according to this, we've got about four and a half, five degrees of caster. So the factory spec on that is three degrees. That's, that's okay. Uh, the service allowable is two to four. Honestly, in my eyes, the, the more caster you can get on one, the better. So, or camber. Uh, yeah, caster, I'm sorry. So, that's kind of kind of how I set these up with this, you know, cheap Circle Track Racers special caster camber gauges. The other thing that you need to have, or the other thing that matters, is toe-in. Now, toe-in, if you imagine your tires and you're going down the road, Let's change up here. So here's your tires. And you're going straight down the road. Okay, and it makes sense that all four tires need to be pointed in the same direction when you're going straight down the road. Okay, that's not a that's not a mystery. Well, what happens is since there's rubber bushings and things in the front end that give the friction of your tires is pushing back on your, you know, you've got A arms in here, you know, you got your lower control arm. So all of that stuff is sprung with rubber bushings. Or even if they're poly bushings, there's still some give in all of the front end on this. So the friction of your tires, now we're talking about a back-wheel drive, two-wheel drive rig, or a back-wheel drive in two-wheel drive. The, the friction, the rolling friction pushing on your tires is going to flex all of this stuff this way. So toe-in counteracts that. So you actually need to point your tires towards each other in the front direction of travel. You need to point your tires towards each other in the front. That way, as you're going down the road, they naturally straighten back out and your it corrects for that force that's trying to pull them apart. So that's toe-in. So these are very simple little devices all the circle track racer guys have got something similar to this that they've cobbled together or they're directly measuring off the tires i don't like measuring off tires so what you do is first off is you sight down these and you get it to where when you sight down this towards the back tire it you're equally offset. Now these jimmies and blazers, all the S10s, the front ends are wider than the back ends. That's common on a lot of automobiles. The front ends are a little bit wider than the back ends. So what I do is I've got, I use kind of the wag system on it, but basically you want to be pointed, everything pointed straight down the road as much as you can get it. And then you take a measurement and these these are identical side to side, and this is just inch and a half angle iron that I've made. So you reach underneath from, and you hook right here, and then you just read a reading. Now, some people use two different tape measures. I use one because I don't trust tape measures to read the same. But you, You measure the front, that one's uh, 69 and three quarters. Oh, 
and then you get back down here on your bad knee. And then your tape measure clinks over on you. Measure the back. So that's about, oh, 70 inches, 70 and an eighth. So we've got, that was 69 and three quarters, that was 70 and an eighth. So we've got about three eighths of an inch of toe in. That's a little bit much, but I'm gonna live with it. Uh, it's good enough for me. And it's good enough for this rig because you know the the bushings in this are not just brand new fluffy fresh they've got some they've got some wear on them so that's going to hold that really good so i've got my caster my camber my toe end set as good as i can get it okay almost by miraculous happenstance i did not have to adjust on anything on the front end but on all the S10 four-wheel drives, you've got uh, cam bolts up here. Now, you can get these cam bolts aftermarket. I I've always got a set sitting on the shelf just in case. But if you're at a junkyard, get the cam bolts. If you're stealing parts, get the cam bolts. Because the aftermarket ones are not nearly as good as the OEMs. So the, to adjust all of this stuff, you back the lock nut off and you rotate the bolt and it turns these cams in here and by adjusting on that and twisting those cams around you're moving the a arm the upper a arm the front or the back in and out and by a combination of these two independent movements you're changing your caster and your camber and getting that all done when you get the caster and camber set then you got to go do the toe in because caster and camber is going to change the toe in. When you get the toe in set, you got to double check the caster and camber because toe in will slightly affect caster and camber. So doing this on manual equipment does take some time, but this is the way that our fathers and grandfathers did it. I mean, this the, nothing has changed. Geometry is still geometry ever since Euclid. So. Let's uh, break this down, and I'll show you the turntables, just in case nobody's ever seen one. So here's one of the turntables. Now, the way this works is, now I jack up the rig, and I don't really, you're supposed to have all four tires at exactly the same height. And that makes a difference in your measurements. If the back end's a little lower, front end's a little lower, that will jack with your, your readings a little bit because everything depends on levels. I don't do, I don't, I get it close enough. It drives okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not down to the gnat's butt. So the way these work is I jack up the front end, slide these underneath with the tire centered on the turntable both ways. So the middle of my contact patch is in the middle of the turntable. When I let it down, these will scoot a little bit, and I'll reach under and kick at them because your suspension, when you let the weight down on the suspension, it will spread just a hair, half inch, three quarters. But I will kick these a couple of times or whack them with a wooden mallet to, to make them find their own center. And once I've relieved that, that stress on them, you pull these pins out, these locking pins, and then this turntable it has... One, two, or one, two, three degrees of free travel. There's a ball bearing wicker doodle inside of there that allows it to have free travel in the entire XY plane and rotational plane. So that allows you to, you know, turn your, turn your steering. And it also takes up for what's going to happen as the steering is moving. It, you know, it allows it to float. Uh, the, the turntables and the caster camber gauge, I'm pretty sure I bought them on Flea Bay. Bought them new from, from some vendor on Flea Bay because I don't do Scamazon as much as I do Flea Bay. I think I've got less than 300, 300 bucks in the whole shooting match. That's not really expensive 
And if you've got old worn out Chevrolets where you're having to, you know, I've got a whole fleet of these things. If you're having to do alignments, and we do because we beat up and down dirt roads a bunch. And, uh, you know, you, you hit a chug hole and, and anyway, we have a lot of alignment issues. You know, if I can buy all this stuff and do it myself in two hours for 300 bucks, 400 bucks, two alignment jobs downtown pays for this equipment. And my time, you know, I like doing this stuff. So am I money ahead? I don't know. Am I doing as good of a job as alignment shop downtown? I don't know. But I do know that my children ride in this vehicle and I wanted to line right. So there you have it. Well, I hope this was clear, and I hope you learned something. And while we're on the subject of learning something, on the board behind me, here before too long, we're going to get some maps up on that board, and I'm going to take pins and put in there. I want all my viewers to comment where you're located. If it's some little old town in the middle of nowhere, the, you know, the armpit of nowhere like we are, just comment with your latitude and longitude. 37 degrees west, 91 degrees north. I don't know. Or 37 degrees north, 91 degrees west. Wherever you are in the world, just comment. You know, if you're in Perth, Australia, well, that's probably on the map. If you're in Inland Cargill, New Zealand, well, that's probably on the map. But if you're in tiny town... New Hampshire. Well, I don't even know if New Hampshire is even a real place. So anyway, comment in the car, leave a comment, tell me where you're at so we can, we can track you and hunt you down. In the meanwhile, y'all drive safe, watch for deer.